Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, and that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. What do we do on Horse Center when it's two weeks after the Breeders' Cup and a week before Thanksgiving? Yeah, it, it, the holidays are coming, Matt. The Breeders' Cup is over. You know, Saturday, May 7, 2022 is kind of in my head for some reason. I'm not sure why it's about five and a half months out. Oh, I know, Matt. It's the run for the roses. It's the Kentucky Derby. And that's, that means it's going to be our first preview show of the 2022 Kentucky Derby of the year. Is that something you're ready for, sir? I, oh, hey, of course I am, Brian. And I guess, I guess it's appropriate because I think the first K- Kentucky Derby future wager for 2022 is also imminent there you go what could be better let's start talking kentucky derby it's never too early to start kentucky derby uh, talk matt and i you know there's there's going to be a lot of exciting horses that debut uh over the next uh, few months but i think we have a nice list of horses here that are either grade one stakes winners or have just only won a maiden or even there's a maiden on our list matt Without further ado, let's jump right in. And I think we have to talk about the Breeders' Cup hero first. His name is Corniche. He was purchased for 1 million.5 as a two-year-old in training, Matt. What did they know? What did they see? He's looked good so far. Uh, Yeah, I guess so. Did they, have they earned back their $1.5 million uh, purchase price already? And by that, I certainly don't mean uh, in purse money yet, but but down the road, three for three. I don't know. Maybe they have. Yeah, he's uh, he, he, he's getting close already in purse money. Of course, he's worth more than that now. The breeding doesn't scream classic contender to me. Quality Road was a, a wonderful horse who probably was best at about nine furlongs. Najron on the, on the female side, it, it doesn't scream $1.5 million purchase either. Uh, but this horse has looked good. He shows lots of speed, whether it be in a five and a half furlong debut, Matt, or two consecutive grade one wins at eight and a half furlongs. We know he can go two turns to a point. Bob Baffert is the trainer, Matt, and as of right now, Bob Baffert is banned from training in next year's Kentucky Derby. Uh, call me crazy, but I, I, I just don't know if that ban will, will stick come five and a half months from now. Yeah, I kind of have that feeling too, Brian, and strictly a feeling. I, I think we'll know more when we see the the adjudication starting to come for the case of Naira's ban on Baffert. I think maybe that'll give us a little indication of what's going on. But anyway, uh, we'll see the ownership of Corniche after the uh win in the Breeders' Cup was was kind of cagey about what they're going to do heading down the road. So um, I think they're waiting to see also. But right now with those two grade ones you mentioned, Brian, Corniche has already got 30 Kentucky Derby points, and which is probably enough to qualify the rep for the run for the Roses. Yeah, I, I suppose it is, Matt. Uh, it, it may be if he doesn't get another point. Of course, if he doesn't get another point, we're probably not going to see him come first Saturday in May. But we'll, we'll see on Corniche. A very nice two-year-old. Certainly going to be the two-year-old champion of 2021. Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he had to work a little bit from his outside post. Once he got the lead, he looked good all the way around like he's done in all three races questions about 10 furlongs i've said that before about some baffert horses who certainly were able to get the 10 furlongs corniche will be the winter book favorite as we move ahead into a new year uh we have an eight to one on our top 12 here matt uh and i think that's because he's the most likely horse to be in the kentucky derby as of right now next on the list is jack christopher and i thought there was a good chance that jack christopher would have been the favorite there's a couple big names that weren't in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and Jack Christopher heads that list. Chad Brown is yet to win the Kentucky Derby. Jack Christopher looked super good in his first two starts. Absolutely did, Brian. Uh, uh, in that maiden win in the Champagne, 
He has run the highest buyer speed figure of any two-year-old this year. The only triple digit, a 102, which is a which is a Kentucky Derby kind of number. I must say, I just read um, uh, literally Brian an hour or so before. Uh, we started doing the show that Jack Christopher had to have a screw put into his left front uh, shin and will now be out of training for two months and will come back to, into training in Florida. I don't know if that already jeopardizes his chances for uh, the first Saturday in May. Well, it's not positive news. We knew something was wrong when he was scratched out of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, where, like I said, he may have been the favorite. The son of Monnings was super in his race at uh, Saratoga, six for a long maiden, special weight. And then the one turn, one mile, grade one champagne at Belmont Stakes. I think there are questions with him as far as distance, but another trainer where I really have a lot of confidence in as far as getting a horse ready to run a distance. Having said that, it's hard to get a horse to go 10 furlongs if it's not a 10 furlong horse. We don't know for sure if Jack Christopher is. And what Matt just told us, uh, there's a delay. He'll be off for a while. Uh, two months at this time of year, it's, it's, it's a good time to do it because that means he would be back in training, oh, say late January or so. And that would give him plenty of time to be ready for the Kentucky Derby. But it is a, uh, a hurdle that Jack Christopher will need to get over. I'm not sure, and you may have uh, alluded to this with your talk about speed figures. I'm not sure if any two-year-old has been more impressive than Jack Christopher has been in his first two starts, a son of Munnings out of a half hour's mare. Same questions as Corniche, 10 furlongs, we're not sure. The next one, horse on the list, Matt, is uh, a, a rattle and roll. And I think it'd be nice to see Penny McPeak on the Kentucky Derby Trail, one of the, the best trainers here in the Midwest. Uh, he's had a lot of nice horses over the years. Just seems like he hasn't had a real big shot uh, for, for a few years now at the Kentucky Derby. Maybe rattle and roll out of the first crop sire connect will be such a horse for trainer Penny McPeak. Yeah, could be, Brian. Uh, um, already one of those grade one winners that you mentioned we would talk about on the show with a win in the Breeders' for Breeders Futurity, which was, which was a 10-point race for uh, the Kentucky Derby. A win in an important race like that uh, certainly gives a two-year-old an awful lot of promise uh, looking uh, into uh, the late winter and early spring. Yeah, the Breeders' Futurity is, is, is a wonderful race that came in in the fall. In, in a lot of ways, I think it has more bearing on who are the best two-year-olds in the Midwest uh, than, than, say, the races at Churchill Downs in the fall. Uh, of course, uh, a year ago, Essential Quality won that race, and uh, he went on to bigger and better things since. Rather than Roll looked great coming from off the pace, winning that Breeders' Futurity, grade one Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland in a big way. And I think he beat uh, a bunch of talented horses there at Keeneland. Maybe there's some uh, uh, lightly raced horses who will get better out of that race, but Rattle and Roll was clearly best. An interesting uh, two-year-old season for Rattle and Roll. He, he started in a six furlong race where he really came running to get up for third. Then he went nine furlongs in his second race, which was also a maiden, of course, and that was at Saratoga, and he bolted on the turn. So uh, I think McPeak, McPeak thought of him as a distance horse uh, pretty much immediately, or at least after he came flying in that debut performance. And, and then his mile of 16th races, uh, both the maiden breaker and the Breeders' Futurity, very impressive. He rallies. Uh, Johannesburg is a question for me as far as pedigree, but there is some uh, distance pedigree on his female side and connect uh, a son of Curlin, a very talented son of Curlin. There's reason to think that Rattle and Roll will in fact, be a 10 for a long horse, Matt. Yeah, uh, all good things at this point, and, you know, we'll see. And hopefully uh, Kenny McPeak uh, on this Kentucky Derby Trail has some good luck all the way up to the big race. Yeah, and he, he, he had to miss the Breeders' Cup right. Juvenile as well. Didn't seem like anything serious, so we'll see when we see rattle and roll back for McPeak. Uh, Matt, uh, we don't know. It's been a few years since we've seen a filly in the Kentucky Derby, and we have no real great reason to expect a Kentucky Derby Philly uh, in 2022. But I think uh, the season that Echo Zulu put together uh, merits a pretty, I guess, a pretty strong place on our list because she's number four here on the list. Uh, more proof that Gunrunner has just had a, an amazing freshman year. Echo Zulu has been nothing but terrific. Uh, 
yeah, I don't expect to see Echo Zulu on the on the Kentucky Derby Trail or or certainly in the in the run for the roses. But I think it is very fair to say, Brian, that Echo Zulu with the with her five for, for five record has had the best campaign of any juvenile, male or female. Yeah, Echo Zulu, she's been terrific. Maiden race and then three grade one races. She's four for four. Daughter of Gunrunner, uh, her broodmare sires Menifee. Uh, Menifee, of course, was uh, pretty uh, pretty darn good in his Triple Crown run years ago when he went after Charismatic uh, in uh, the, the Triple Crown of, uh, oh boy, 20, 23 years ago or so. I'm, I'm trying to do some quick mm -hmm. math in my head there. Uh, so Echo Zulu has some distance breeding, and I'm I'm going to, you know me, I like to play devil's advocate with you, Matt Schiffman, a little bit. Um, uh, uh, Rachel Alexander, she was a monster uh, the first half of her three-year-old year, and Aspison didn't have her on the barn early on, but when he got her, he wheeled her right back into Preakness. Um, Songbird, if Songbird had been 100% healthy early in her three-year-old year, I think she was a threat to run in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you know, if the Philly is that good and Echo Zulu keeps doing what she's been doing, I think there is a reasonable chance that we see her in the Kentucky Derby. I think there'd be a reasonable chance if it wasn't a 20 horse field, Brian. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Right back at me, Matt. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Number five on our list, Matt, uh, a horse who probably is not nearly as accomplished. There's no probably about it isn't as accomplished as the first four horses we talked about. Giant game, though, uh, really impressed. Now, this is the final. It's a small final crop for the great sire Giants Causeway. By the way, Giants Causeway means distance to me as much as anything. So this is one of the good horses from his small final crop. His name is Giant Game. I was really impressed what he, what he did as such an experienced cult, inexperienced cult going out to California, uh, facing winners for the first time. He ran a really good race in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He certainly did. He was a little bit of a surprise entry for uh, for Dale Romans. And uh, uh, like you said, uh, uh, came into the race relatively inexperienced and ran a really strong race to finish third. Uh, um, Dale Romans, another one uh, uh, who has been on that derby trail an awful lot of times, but uh, another one who, you know, I'd love to see have a little bit more luck uh, heading to the big race. And Matt, I, th this just came in. Dale Romans is high on Giant Game. Do you believe it? <laughs> I he's, absolutely he's, believe it. He's high on this one. Giant Game, uh, you know, uh, everything's good. Um, uh, rallying performance in his debut at seven furlongs. He stretched out, looked really good, winning uh, uh, at eight and a half furlongs. Then he goes out to Del Mar again. First time against winners is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And uh, he was right there at the top of the stretch. You know, I wouldn't worry about the fact that he really couldn't gain on Corniche in the stretch, given uh, Corniche had a lot of advantages on Giant Game uh, going into that last quarter mile of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But a very good performance from Giant Game, one he can build upon, should like 10 furlongs, an interesting horse for trainer Dale Romans. Another interesting horse, and we're going to go back to that trainer again, Bob Baffert. He's got three on our list, and Messier, Definitely deserves to be on the list. Another horse who's got distance breeding, a son of empire maker, Matt, but to date, he's only sprinted. Yeah, and uh, the recent winner of the, of the Bob Hope Stakes at Del Mar uh, last weekend uh, um, certainly was an addition to his resume, keeping in mind that that was only a four-horse field and three of them were from the barn of Bob Baffert, um, you know, uh, a, a victory by three and a half lengths, you know, in, in, in a decent kind of time. We'll learn more about uh, this, about Messier named after the great uh, hockey player when he is likely to make his next start in the Los Al Futurity. Yeah, he'll be in the uh, Los Al Futurity the uh, second weekend of December, Matt, and he'll stretch out to, I guess that's a mile and a 16th race, I believe. Um, there are things I like about Messier because he, you, you mentioned it was a four-horse field, but there were talented sprinters in that field. And, and this is a horse who's been coming, you know, not far off the pace, but he's been coming from off the pace in these sprints. Uh, I have no doubt he's going to get better as distances increase. 
competition has to increase as well for Messier, but the fact that he's coming off the pace in these races that are so easy just to get out on the lead and then and, and take them all the way uh, makes me think that Messier has some real talent. Uh, 10 furlongs, empire maker out of a smart strike mare, no worries there. He's also a good play if you're looking to uh, get in in a really winter, early winter book. That would, of course, be the Queen's Plate because he is bred in Ontario, the son of Empire Maker. All right, Matt. Uh, Baffert, fantastic fillies, uh, grade one winners. Let's, uh, let's go down to horses who may have uh, uh, chased a little bit in that Breeders' Cup or, or, or have been chasing Corniche, at least, because... Papa Cap is another interesting horse to me. Um, we talked about Gunrunner already with Echo Zulu. Papa Cap has been the best son so far, the best son of Gunrunner. He's a stakes winner. He's won on either coast for trainer Mark Cassie. And the last two times he was second to Corniche. Yeah, and you know, like so many of uh, so many Mark Cassie runners, uh, for a two-year-old, he's relatively well-seasoned already. Um, no doubt he'll get a little bit of a break over the winter and, and do some maturing. And, and Cassie will, you know, put him uh, back on the Derby trail uh, to compete and get back in form. I assume with Cassie that, that his preference will be to uh, put him back in um, on the Derby trail at the fairgrounds where uh, uh, Cassie often... Uh, tries to get his derby horses ready yeah i think that's probably true matt this horse is running florida and now four straight races out in southern california listen I, i'm not one to just include a horse just because he ran second in the breeders cup especially the breeders cup juvenile when you look uh, how those breeders cup juvenile horses have done in the in the kentucky derby over the years there's a few exceptions including last year but generally the, the uh, uh results of breeders cup juvenile horses moving forward to the kentucky derby is not great but i, I think pop cap is there's a lot of positive signs there. I, I didn't think he always had the best trip. And, and listen, Corniche is a better two-year-old than Papa Cap. We can't argue that after watching the last two races. But Corniche has more speed. And Papa Cap, uh, if he can develop a little bit like his awesome sire, uh, who was an awesome runner and now becoming quickly an awesome sire did, uh, Papa Cap you know, might have more upside than the horse that's beaten him in the last two starts, Corniche. So Papa Cap. One to watch. I thought he finished uh, the last race very well, second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, a little disappointment in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, he really took a lot of money. He was the second choice in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Let's start talking Todd Pletcher horses. Matt, I know you love Todd Pletcher horses. Command performance, um, we, fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile was not exactly what we were hoping for or expecting from the son of Union Rags. Yeah, and, and maybe we were expecting and asking too much uh, of the horse, uh, uh, who, as we know, is still a maiden, you know, ran second uh, behind Jack Christopher in that uh, uh, speedy champagne stakes. Um, but clearly, uh, there is some talent in there for this horse that's owned by the partnership of uh, Mike Rapoli and St. Elias uh, Stables. Um, I heard Pletcher talking today and said, yeah, he's going to, He's going to get a little bit of time off, no problems, no issues, but just a little bit of time off uh, in the early winter um, uh, down in Florida, down at one of the farms, um, and then we'll uh, join Pletcher's barn in Florida, you know, in the early winter. A little time to mature. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, maybe he's just, you know, a horse that isn't going to find the winter circle a lot, but, you know, uh, certainly has faced some tough competition. He has faced tough competition, including the top two horses on the list and several other horses on this list as well. Listen, uh, call me an apologist, if you will, but I think, you know, yeah, you, you kind of said it. Maybe we were expecting a little too much and maybe he was bet a little too much. He was a maiden. He had never been two turns. He had never raced outside of New York. And he became a clear second choice in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And, you know, in those races, we like the Saratoga Maiden and then the Champagne. He really rallied. He came from well out of it and, and, and showed a strong closing kick. He was awfully close to the pace, or at least a lot closer to the pace than I expected. And, and maybe that was yeah. forced when Jock Christopher scratched and Corniche was the horse to beat in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. 
But uh, those are four factors why that fourth place finish in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile may be excusable. Uh, again, he had never been be two turns before. He never won a race before, never raced outside of the East Coast, shipped across country, and probably was too close to the pace uh, according to what he really wants to do, and that's rally. I, I'm not going to give up on this son of Union Rags out of a tappet mare. Great breeding for classic distances just yet off of that performance. Uh, another one on the Pletcher list. Pletcher's got a bunch of interesting two-year-olds, but the two we included are Command Performance and Major General. Uh, quickly, I think Constitution has become Todd Pletcher's favorite sire. Here's another one, Matt, and he's two for two. Yeah, why not uh, being a favorite sire? Uh, not only uh, is he a son of comp uh, Constitution, he's from the, the from Windstar Farms, which has had, has had so much success um, on the Derby Trail and uh, uh, in the Kentucky Derby, not only with Todd Pletcher, but obviously with, uh, uh, with, with uh, Baffert too. Um, yeah, like you said, we, we could maybe have included this horse in the discussion of uh, horses with nice graded stakes victories who didn't go in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, Major General got, as you said, his maiden victory and then went down to Kentucky to get a nice win in the grade three Iroquois. Yeah, and he's, he's getting some time off as well. So we'll see when Major General comes off. But uh, he showed me a few things too. Uh, Saratoga, six and a half furlongs. And then uh, I guess it was a eight and a half furlong this year for the Iroquois, the grade three at Churchill Downs, as you said. I thought he was a little green early in the stretch in that race, but he, uh, he was very game as uh, there were a bunch of horses coming at him and Major General had something left. Constitution, Uncle Mo, awfully good breeding there. Uh, Major General, one to watch, but one we need to see more of yet because uh, how much did he beat in the Iroquois? We really don't know, but he's got to win a stakes win over the track at Churchill Downs. Another horse to watch, another Bob Baffert to watch, Matt. Uh, there's some distance breeding here. Uh, a son of Mondagliadoro out of a Spitestown mare, a, a pretty good Spitestown mare. His name is Rockefeller. And uh, Rockefeller went uh, cross country to your neck of the woods when he won the recent Nashua stakes. Yes, Bob Baffert spreading out, spreading out the talent, uh, uh, finding a spot for, uh, for some of his many... Uh, prospects and yeah rockefeller medagliadoro uh, that means distance out to new york for the nashua grade three which you're saying at belmont park yeah uh yes not usually at belmont park the nashua is usually run at aqueduct but they stayed open at belmont park an extra week um for a variety of reasons so the nashua was on the calendar for that uh uh that weekend and they ran the race at Belmont Park, but that's fine in either case. Uh, it uh, uh, was a one turn race. Um, let's face it, the Nashua hasn't been the greatest producer ultimately of horses on the Derby Trail, but it's Bob Baffert. Yeah, and it was Belmont Park. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that means much as we look forward to the Kentucky Derby, but uh, the Nashua at Belmont Park, interesting. It's also interesting that he was a debate debut winner sprinting they put him in the grade one mile 16th American Pharaoh and he couldn't quite keep up with his stable mate. Uh, Cornicia beat him off there and, and Rockefeller finished fourth in that American Pharaoh. Then he dropped back to one turn, as you mentioned, for the Nashua across country. So I think there's some good things there to like about Rockefeller, including the breeding. Obviously, as a Baffert horse, two for three, we had to include him on this list. Another horse we didn't need to include, but I wanted to throw him in there, Matt. Uh, smile happy because I, I saw his race at Keeneland and, and he looked really good, just blowing the doors off uh, other maidens at Keeneland. That was his only start. Interesting breeding, a son of run happy out of a pleasant tap mare. So there's some uh, long winded uh, Buckland Farm bloodlines yeah. on his female side to go along with that sprint champion sire of his run happy. Smile happy though, looked very good in that one race, which was at Keeneland, eight and a half furlongs. Yeah, and that's a, that's a, certainly an interesting part of it, that it was two turns, it was eight and a half furlongs for a run happy, which we, we have learned clearly already, just like run happy himself, uh, these run happy horses are getting better and better as they get older. But this one um, has already gone two turns, uh, he's expected to 
uh, show up in the Kentucky Jockey Club at the end of November, a grade two. And again, we talked about Kenny McPeak earlier. Here's another one for McPeak. Yeah, the second on the list for Kenny McPeak and uh, one of the more impressive debut winners in my eyes on this list. Another impressive debut winner and another one from that small final crop of the Great Giants Causeway, Matt, is Classic Causeway. Uh, Classic Causeway's uh, trained by Brian Lynch and his debut came sprinting at Saratoga and he looked really good, but he was beaten last time pretty convincingly by Rattle and Roll. Yeah, and uh, uh, as you said, he broke his maiden at Saratoga um, and, and did that in a seven furlong uh, sprint. So that I'm a little bit more impressed with that, certainly for a two-year-old to debut and run really well uh, going seven furlongs as opposed to five and a half or six or whatever. And, and, and that was really important. And it, I, I think, impressed trainer Brian Lynch because he took a shot with him, as you mentioned, in that Breeders' Futurity and ran third. Uh, um, I wouldn't get too discouraged by that because we already talked about how impressive and how much we liked Rattle and Roll, roll earlier in the show. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people would have Classic Causeway so high on their list, but I'm glad we agreed to include him here, Matt. He's, he's one of my sleepers. I, I'm with you. Seven Furlongs is a tough place to debut, and he did it beautifully at Saratoga. Uh, and, and then in, in the Breeders' Futurity, which was, again, a big field, he, he was way, he was parked way outside. I, I want to say he was the 13 post position. And uh, from there, he went right to the lead. And maybe he had no other choice if he wanted to win the race, but to go right from the lead. So he set the pace from the 13 hole. He did it pretty well. Uh, he wasn't far from second at the finish. Rattle and Roll was definitely the best horse in the race. But Classic Causeway stayed on well, uh, jumping up from that sprint to a two-turn race at Keeneland, big field, kind of adverse post position. I, I thought it, overall it was a good performance. It, this is a horse who, who I think probably won't be a speedster eventually, um, maybe more so than any horse on the list too, Matt. Giants Causeway out of a Thunder Gulch mare. We're talking about a horse who should have no problems for 10 furlongs. And maybe Brian Lynch is a trainer due to have a Kentucky Derby horse as well. Yeah, a very good trainer, the Australian Brian Lynch, uh, uh, maybe a little bit a lower profile than, you know, than the McPeaks or Romans or Bafferts, but a very, very good trainer. And it's good to see him with a prospect like this. Hey, Matt, that's, that's our top 12, our top 12, five and a half months out. Uh, last year, a bunch of this, these top 12 horses made it on to the Kentucky Derby. So hopefully uh, that'll happen again. That's not only good for our, our selections, but it's good for seeing good horses continue on to become good three-year-olds. Uh, it was fun to put together this list. Don't give us too, too hard a time. There, there literally is another 30 horses that we could have easily included in this top 12. But uh, hey, we chose to make it uh, uh, an even dozen. And these are the 12 we came up with right now, uh, mid, uh, mid to late November here, five and a half months out, Matt. I think we did a pretty good job. Thank you for that. And, and before we go, I do want to get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, just to continue, I, I wouldn't be surprised if most of these horses that we talked about show up on the first, you know, list of 23 uh, or however many horses they're going to put in that Kentucky Derby future pool that I mentioned uh, uh, when it comes out next week. So uh, horse center fans, even if you're not going to put any money in that wager, it, it, it might be fun to keep track and see what kind of odds show up with uh, some of these prospects. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show. Absolutely. And Matt, I think that's a very good point. I, I think there's some good long shots on our list here. So uh, look out for them and, and, and maybe throw in a little flyer this far out on that Kentucky Derby future wager. I want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel here at Horse Racing Nation. It helps Matt out. It also helps you out. Turn the notifications on so you always get the uh, notice that Horse Center is uh, is right there in your inbox. We're we're happy to be on the sh uh, show every week. We're happy we have a great sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Most of all, we're happy that you follow us each and every week right here on Horse Center. Next week, we will be back with a big show, Matt. We are going to start talking about some of the big races in late fall because they're coming, uh, including races like the Clark and the Cigar Mile. So that'll be fun. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. We'll see you next week right here 
on Horse Star.